Well, hello, and welcome to another edition of the e-commerce evolution podcast. I'm your host, Brett Curry, CEO of OMG Commerce. And today we're diving into a topic we have never covered on this podcast before. We're talking about challenge-based marketing. But more than that, we're talking about how to build a community, how to build a loyal following, because I'm convinced if you're going to build a valuable brand that's in it for the long haul or that you can exit from for a really nice sale, you need community, you need engagement, you need loyal followers. And so uh, my guest today is Alicia Reynoso, and we met two different times recently. Uh, we spoke at Seller Summit in Florida. Shout out to Steve Chu and Tony. Um, and then we also met at Blue Ribbon uh, Puerto Rico. So we're, we're speakers at both those events. And ever, no, no uh, was it Puerto Rico or was it another event, uh, Alicia? At Denver. Where, where, Denver. Yeah, yeah, Blue Ribbon, Denver. Um, but it, you know, so many of you are like, man, you got to listen to Alicia's presentation. And so we connected. I'm so glad we did. And, and for those that don't know, Alicia is the founder of Challenge Makers. So she helps people with challenge-based marketing. And then you're the former co-founder of Live Infinitely. So we're going to talk about that. So Alicia, uh, thanks for taking the time. Welcome to the show. And how's it going? Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I've been super excited. Um, I like in all of our Blue Ribbon uh, events, I've heard so much Curry, Brett Curry. So I've always wanted to like actually connect. Um, yeah. So I'm glad we actually got the opportunity. That, that's awesome. Uh, and so I think we got we to gotta talk about this for those that are watching and look at the video. Uh, you know, one, you, you, you've, you know, you started a, a, a health based brand that you guys sold, which we'll talk about as, as we go, but you're not in like a normal studio, not in an office. You're also <laughs> not in a typical bedroom, which has become kind of the norm, you know, in a, in a post COVID world, but it looks like you're in an RV, Alicia. Can, yep, can you, can you let the folks know where are you right my now? My RV. Yep. Yeah. Um, so my, uh, fiance and I, we actually live on the road now selling our business so we live six months on the road um and we're just started our next six months for our second year um, this year we're traveling the east coast so right now we're in north carolina and it's been a blast awesome. and so this is your second year to spend half mm -hmm. the year on the road yep yep so last you year like was it all then. west coast oh yeah love it this has like been the dream for sure like starting the business selling the business and then travel um so last year we did all west coast this year we're doing the east coast that's awesome. I know I even have like part of me is like, man, that, you know, the, the van life or the RV life would be really cool. Now I've got eight kids. So like that is not in my immediate future by any means. Uh -huh. But I also know <laughs> like it's, it's a lot of work, right? I had, I had a, a guy that worked for me for a long time named Brandon and, and they, uh, he and his wife and two kids had an RV and he said, <laughs> had like some really bad experiences and some comical experiences. But he, he told me, he said, we had a travel itch. And we scratched that thing until it bled. And, uh, <laughs> like I, I get that too. I get like that there could be some challenges too, but it looks it looks super fun. So I'll live vicariously through you guys for now. Awesome. But, uh, yeah, maybe when you your enjoy. kids are grown, uh, you can you can hit the road, try it out. Very possible. Very possible. I may be more of a like flying and Airbnb type of guy, but I like, like the <laughs> yeah. idea of RVs too. So uh, let's talk about this. So we're we're talking about building a, a hyper engaged following a uh, community around your brand. Um, first of all, how, how did you start your brand? So let's get a little bit of your background and then we'll get into kind of the why behind challenges. Yeah, for sure. So, um, you know, I was um, 19, 20 looking, um, I thought the internet was a cool thing. Like, how can I make money? How can I start a business? Um, I learned about Amazon FBA um, through Amazing, you know, the Amazing course. I bought yeah, that course. Also, I just spoke um, at uh, Amazing SellerCon a couple months oh, you ago. you did? Yep. Oh, nice. Yeah, I've been wanting to reach out to them because uh, that was like really what kicked it off for me uh, back then with the amazing course. And oh, I'll make uh, I'll make an intro to the gang. They'll love to hear from you. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I took that, got it started. Uh, we launched uh, Live Infinitely in 2014, uh, more so 2015. 2014, we launched a dead product, so official launch 2015. Um. And like every year, it was just super easy to scale. It was like the wild, wild west back there, or like you could just like launch products and scale. So we were like, um, were very successful the very first few years, but then things started getting more competitive. Um, you had to get a little bit more creative. And so that's when we're like, okay, let's, you know, get on Shopify and try to like build our brand, you know, Amazon and Shopify. And that's where like really the struggle came in. And um, that's when we joined Blue Ribbon and we're like, okay, how do we learn Facebook? How do we do all the things, email marketing, learn all of that? 
Um, and we were slowly making progress until like 2019, 2020. Um, we learned Facebook ads in 2020 is when we launched our challenge. Um, and that's just like when it changed our entire direct to consumer like website. Like that just blew up from our Facebook ads and our community. Um, and we went from like 99% Amazon to like 50 50, you know, 50% on Shopify, that 50% is on Amazon. Beautiful. Yeah. That I think that's where that's where healthy brands usually want to go or aspire to go that 50 50 split between Amazon and, and you know, true D2C or with Shopify or big commerce or whatever. I think buyers are more interested in that. That feels like and it is a right. more stable business. So kudos to you for, for getting there. And, you know, we already dropped the spoiler alert earlier, but you, you sold and you had a successful exit. And I think that was in large part to the fact that you had a, a diversified business, yeah, exactly. uh, which I know uh, helped a lot. So uh, give us kind of the the overview. We'll, we'll dive into all the details. So this is more like a, here's what the challenge was. Here's what it did. And then we're going to get into the, uh, the the ins and outs and the whys and hows and things like that. But I want, I want to kind of tease this to, for people because uh, I don't know. We, we got a lot on our plate, right? We got a lot of marketing opportunities. We could go Facebook, YouTube, you know, things on Amazon, bottom of funnel, mid funnel, whatever. But I think a lot of people are missing this concept of challenges. So what was the high, high level stuff and then how did it work? Yeah. So it was a 60 day hydration challenge. Water bottles was our hero product. That's what we sold the most of. So we created a 60 day hydration challenge to uh, initially to like nurture our existing community, you know, and just try to like increase our lifetime value and get people, you know, to know us and understand the brand more. But then it ended up being like something that we used for everything. Top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel. It was like all of it. <laughs> you know, it was, it was like this really unique way that we could go out into the world and attract people, you know, with something that was purely value based. You know, like this is for you. It's free to join. Come into our world and like let us help you. And then when people like bought our products or in our world, then it was something that they got to actually know our brand more and fall in love with us. And like everyone in our community would market all of our other products. So then they'd buy more. Um, and so it's just like became this big thing that completely changed our brand. You know, before when we were just on Amazon, we were trying to convey like our message of like living infinitely, m meaning like live your life with infinite possibilities chase after your dreams, live bigger, live bolder. That was like all of our messaging. But when you're on Amazon, it's a little bit trickier to like share that, you know? Um, and so when we had the community, we were able to like share that message of going after your dreams and being healthy and, and really create that connection with our customers that like we never had before, which helped in all of our marketing, you know, because we actually knew our customers then. So it was like high level, this thing that came in intention or meaning or our intention was to have it at the you know bottom of the funnel to nurture our customers, but it just changed everything, which is really yeah. Cool. And, and and just to kind of tease the results, I heard something like was it double, triple the business or something over time? Like yeah, what was yeah, that triple our revenue. And the biggest thing was like uh, our lifetime value increased by like forty seven percent, which was like huge for us <laughs> because we sold yeah, like a fourteen fifteen dollar water bottle. And so especially on Facebook, it's like how do you go out and acquire customers? on a $15, right. $15 water bottle. You know, we had to get super creative um, with our bun ring and everything, but then we'd get people in and they would like fall in love with the brand because we helped them um, in, in ways that other brands weren't that like the lifetime value just skyrocketed. Yeah, I love that so much. And so, I mean, really the, the, the game with D2C is how do we, you know, get that, that appropriate CAC or customer acquisition cost compared to LTV. And so there's really only so much you can do to lower your customer acquisition costs. You've got to increase LTV to be able to really accelerate and press the gas pedal down. And one thing that I like to talk about, and one thing that I've been talking about a lot to to brands is, you know, there's a difference between being a purveyor of goods online or selling stuff online and having a brand in a community. And if you when you have a brand in a community, then it becomes so much easier to sell the next product that you launch or to upsell or to bundle or to increase that LTV. If you're kind of a nameless, faceless, communityless, you know, product on Amazon or wherever, you can have success and you can make money, but but really the next level of success is when you build a brand and you know you've got a brand when people are searching for you by name and when you've got a community and a following around that brand. And so challenges, that was the vehicle you used to really launch that. So 
kind of walk us through how did you get to this point where you're like, hey, we should do a challenge? Yeah, for sure. So I finally just like, we were at that point, 2019 or 20, where we're like, all right, we're kind of stalling, you know, like we're not really growing. Um, we need to like change something um, in order to like continue to grow off Amazon. And so we like sat down and we're like, okay, who is our customer? Like, who are we marketing to? At that point, we were selling like Hammett backpacks, um, bug nets, like just, we were kind of all over the place because it was Amazon, you know, we looked for bestseller it's, ranking. It can be, and, yeah. Yeah. And we were like, let's launch that. And it, that works. But then we're like, okay, who is our, actually our customer? And we sat down and took the time and like realized who they were. And like, then we're like, okay, how can we provide value, you know, to this customer, even if they never paid us? Like, how can we bring somebody into our world, provide so much value to them, you know, even if they don't buy our product? And so I was super excited because like I kind of was our customer and I love being healthy. I love setting goals. Um, So I was like, I can create like journals. I can create eBooks and guides and videos and workouts. I was going to do all these things. And then I realized like, that's just not realistic. You know, we were a small team of three. So much, so much. (laughs) Yeah, that's so much. There's a lot of people that are doing that, right? There are content creators that that have YouTube channels and that have guides and have personal communities and coaching and like all that exists too, to a certain degree. Yeah. And it's great. You know, and if you have the resources and you can do all of that, but I just didn't, you know, we just didn't have like a team. And so then I like, I came up with the idea of like a 60 day hydration challenge. And that just allowed me to take all of that value that I wanted to create and put and like bundle it into this challenge, this community, Um, because they would join the 60 day hydration challenge and pledge to drink water. But then every single week we have like many weekly challenges where we'd work on our nutrition and goal setting and self-love. And all of those other things that were super important to our customer and our on our customer's journey to being successful, um, we could provide them all of that value in just a weekly live call. I jump on back. All right, this week we're gonna focus on nutrition, and I mean I'm not a dietitian or nutritionist or anything, but like I just talk about my experience and like this is you know my recommendation. You know, eat some whole foods, and here's a little checklist to see that you like ate some whole foods this week. And like introduce people to new concepts um, of, you know, the things they needed to learn on their customer journey to be more successful. Um, And so that's kind of how we came up with that idea because it like gave us the ability to like like dramatically over deliver without having to go and create all this. Yeah, you could over deliver and really the customers are creating the content and and it's even probably more effective and more motivating and more engaging and more fun than even if you guys had just you know, broken your back trying to create great content. And so I mm-hmm. really love this. And and I love what you said a minute ago, this idea of truly understanding your customer. And that's another part of the pivot from just selling stuff to being a brand is understanding, let's not just be a product-focused brand. Let's be a customer-focused brand. Who are we serving? Who do we want to serve? Who, who can we connect with? And then let's provide value to them. And I love what you said. Let's provide value even if they don't buy a single product because they will like people love to buy products and if they're connected with you and you offer good products and you offer community people are going to buy stuff right we are addicted to buying stuff but rather than just selling a random products how do we curate products build products launch products that are for this uh set of customers so right love that shift love that it just is way more fulfilling you know like going from selling on Amazon to, and I, you know, started live infinitely. The name, I had a mission from day one, but like couldn't connect with our customers. And so like, it was, it was like, finally, that was like such a fulfilling time in our business with like actually serving them and actually connecting. So it just provides a lot of fulfillment that way. Love it. Love it. So I know you said the challenges are the most effective way to build community. Why do you say that? I say that because it's really identifying the customer journey. And if you can like in any of your marketing, know your customers and the journey that they are on and help take them from point A to point B, um, like I said, without them paying, you're going to have like a lifelong loyal customer for life, you know, because if somebody comes in and you help change their life, whether or not they pay you, they're going to look at you as the source of truth, who they like trust, who they like would you know, come back to you. And so it's like, it's a challenge is the vehicle that can help take them from point A to point B, you know, cause you're like, here is, you know, what you need, all the resources, you know, to be, you know, our customer wanted to be healthy, 
hydrated, loved, uh, motivated, all these things. Um, and so with our weekly challenges and the 60 day overall, it was so much more than hydration. You know, it was like they come in for hydration, but then they, they leave like a different person. They set goals. They feel like they love themselves. They stepped outside of their comfort zone. And so like they go through this transformation that they didn't even expect, you know. Um, and so that's why it's an even like deeper transformation. Uh, and when you put them in a challenge community, they're going through this, um, they're going through this experience with people. And that's like what really changes the game. Because when you go through this journey alone, it, it's like, you know, if we sent them some guides, like, hey, knock yourself out, you know, here's some tools and resources, and they just try to do it. They're not going to be like as successful, um, likely, you know, where if you can put them in a community where they can go on this shared experience. Um, and the challenge is the vehicle that like is that experience, then it creates this like hyper engaged community because they start sharing um, their tips, their tricks, their failures, their successes. You know, this is my favorite healthy meal. They, you know, this is how I set my goals. And then people start commenting like, oh, I love that meal. Can you send me some more information? And it creates this community around um, that sharing experience that your customers are on. And so that's why I think it's the best vehicle for sure because it's systemized. It's super easy as a brand owner to deliver and just give your customers the ability to connect in ways that they wouldn't normally be able to. It's so good. It's so good. I, I love Donald Miller's building a story brand. And one thing he talks about in the book is that the hero in the story is not your product. It's not you as the business owner of the brand. The hero is the customer. And so our job is we're a guide along that journey. We're like a Sherpa helping our customer to the, the peak of the mountain that they're trying to climb. And so the more we can show that with our product, here's how our product can help you get what you want in your life. But then I think the the challenge, the community really helps accelerate that, right? Where otherwise it might just be, a water bottle and then the water bottle exactly. is just sitting at home. But with the challenge, it's like, no, no, no. I'm part of a community now where I can share my story. I can hear other people's stories. I can get motivation. I can get questions answered. I can celebrate and I got people who will uh, cheer me on and clap for me. It's it's a real experience and a community. Um, kind of an interesting story. I, I just got into to running again. I, I went for several years without running and I just run by my house. So like, there's some big hills and stuff. But the other day I was running and uh, running up this big hill and I saw two guys running down the hill. And then at the bottom of the hill, there was a, a, a I think it was one of them, their wives in a, in a Tacoma pickup. And so she picked them up and brought them up the hill and they just kept running up and down the hill. And uh, every time I passed them, they'd be like, you can do this, man. You got this. And like, as the, as the lady drove by in the Tacoma, she's like, you, you keep going, you just keep grinding. And uh, I'd never, I didn't know who they were, but I was like, Hey, this run feels pretty good. Like this is a, yeah. this is a better <laughs> run than normal, right? It was just like this spontaneous That's so community. Awesome. But we all we all want that, and so that's that's when you create these challenges, you can create the environment for that for your customers. And I think you nailed it where you said it's actually pretty easy, right? If you if you structure this the right way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's a great a great example where it's like you feel like the sense of motivation when you have people in your corner. You know, it's just yeah. a whole different thing. And and humans like we're designed to be with people. You know, and totally. so we all crave we all crave that connection and whatever experience you're going on. Sometimes you don't have people in your life going through that experience, you know, like you don't have people that are into running or like that want to get hydrated or get in shape or so if you can find a community through a brand that provides those people that are on that shared experience, you're going to like walk into that brand and stay loyal to them. Totally. Because I think that that's the real magic behind some of these communities that you and I are part of, like Blue Ribbon. I mean, okay, so part of the magic of Blue Ribbon is Ezra Firestone. He's, he's just, he's a genius and he's an awesome right. connector exactly. networker. But the reason, you know, someone will stick around in that for since the beginning, like my business partner and I have been in that group since the beginning, it is because of Ezra, but it's also the connections. Like these, these are our people, right? And we were going through the same stuff all the time. Like I can't talk to some of my local friends or my family necessarily about what we struggle with as entrepreneurs, but I can in that group. And so you're creating that for your customers um, through these challenges, which is, which is really cool. So Let's talk about this. So I, I, I'm sure there's some people listening that are like, okay, but you sell, you sold water bottles before you sold the company. That's easy to do a hydration challenge. So how could this work for another brand? And then how do you figure out kind of where do you insert this and in or where does this fit in the customer journey? Yeah, for sure. So there's two steps to that. And the first is um, the like 
I didn't come up with this, but it like it totally makes sense. There's like three core markets that every product serves. When somebody when somebody is going to buy your product, they're either trying to serve something to do with their health, wealth, or relationship. You know, those are the three core markets and and needs that people are trying to fulfill. So that's the first step is identifying, you know, where your brand falls in that. Do you serve them in their health, wealth, or relationship? And sometimes it's not so obvious. Maybe it's the relationship with themselves. Maybe it's a relationship with their pets. Maybe it's like um, their health with like mental health or emotional health or physical health. Yeah, kind of just have to like dig deep in what of those three core markets do you help serve? And then the next step is really taking the time and mapping out your customer's journey because sometimes it's not so obvious. Like even water bottles seem so obvious to me now, but it's like, I was struggling. It probably I wasn't at the like beginning, whole... though, was it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I like spend like a whole week because you can sell a water bottle to anybody. You know, like I could have like sold it to 40 year old men. And that's a whole different customer journey, you know, than than the middle aged women that I that our community was made up of, you know. And so really figuring out who your customer is and their customer journey in relation to your product. And that has to do a lot with your brand mission. You know, so like you have to understand like your one of your three core markets, but then next step is your brand mission. My brand mission was helping empower people to live their life with infinite possibilities and believe in them themselves that they could do things, they could do big things. Um, so that's what I wanted to empower people to do. Um, and so I found my six day hydration challenge, you know, and my group of people and the customer journey and designed that to to Fit my brand mission and that's just going to be you your brand your brand mission and then just taking the time and I've like built out this like avatar worksheet essentially where it's like the before state the after state like where your customer is where they're trying to go and what are all the objections that are stopping them from achieving that um and so like I, I know one example uh like skincare like we had a client that was massively successful with her their challenge they created a confident in your skin challenge you know, they, they, they realized that the ultimate desire of their customers were to like feel confident, to feel beautiful. Um, they were like, you know, women 30 plus that are just hitting that age where like, oh my gosh, you know, and like they want to still feel youthful and pretty. And um, so they made their challenge around like feeling confident as you're aging and, um, and their challenge like just knocked out of the park. And it's just really a matter of like, it's not so much the product as it is you know, your brand mission and what your mission is to what you're trying to do in the world, you know? And so I think it can be harder for like faceless brands or drop shipping brands because you just, you you need to have a mission. You need to know like what you're trying to do with your product. And that can be the ultimate driver of how you can create your challenge. Because there's this element of authenticity, right? Where, where customers can sniff out if you don't really mean this or if you don't really care. Absolutely. And so this Mm -hmm. has to connect with your mission, with your brand mission, or else customers are going to be like, well, why would I do that? You don't you don't believe in this, right? And then people just get that. Maybe they, they wouldn't verbalize it that way, but they get that sense. And so it does have to align with your with your mission for sure. Absolutely. Um, because as I was looking at some of your ads, some of the things that you ran to launch your challenge, like you were in those ads. I think it was you and a family member or something maybe. And uh, just was authentic, man. Like you could see your passion. People connected with that. They commented on the fact that you know, Alicia, you're, you're living this, you're doing this. We want to be like you type of thing. So, so I think that's important to note too. The challenge has to line up with your mission. And yeah. And you're absolutely right. Customers can sniff it out. <laughs> like I've seen a few communities, their challenges be launched where unfortunately the brand owners weren't bought into their own mission or didn't really have a strong one. And they're, they're successful enough, but like the ones that just kill it are the brand owners that are truly passionate about the mission of their brand. Um, so that really matters. Cool. So what would you do then if you sold auto parts or auto accessories or if you sold home goods or something like that? And I know I'm, I'm throwing some some big categories at you, but but thoughts there. And I know I know you've got to go through the process. I know this isn't just like, a, oh, snap your finger and you come up with a challenge. But but in any any thoughts there to kind of help someone apply this by looking at the you know health, wealth and relationships and, and the journey? I mean, yeah, so the, uh, like, auto parts, it's likely to men, you know, like, that are, uh, that's, like, likely your customer, and you'd identify, like, health, wealth, or relationships, it's likely relationships, um, or it could even be wealth, 
uh, could be wealth too. On, yep, because our, be our, our, our Jeep or our truck or whatever is like a status symbol yeah, to status. us. status. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or it could be the relationship with themselves and their family. So really like identifying which part of that you're in um, and then understanding that that man's customer journey. And you'd be surprised. Like these communities, I wasn't sure if it would work very well with men, but they do because even men are looking for community. And we need connection looking, too, man. Yeah. Yeah. They're looking for connection too where you could join a community and talk about like, I mean, like John say, like brilliant with cars and like it can like tear them apart and put them back together. Um, and he geeks out when he can find somebody else that is as knowledgeable and like can build these things with him. And so like understanding, like, I mean, I wouldn't know exactly the exact challenge I would do, but understanding, you know, him, somebody like him that like loves cars and that's what he used to do, just build them. Um, and then providing him the community to meet other men that are like knowledgeable or want to learn about auto parts and building cars. And what's that for? Is it for racing? Is it for, you know, just buying and selling cars? Like, what is your brand? Like, what's the point of your brand? And uh, really building that community because somebody that builds them to race is much different than the person that's building them and selling them. And so it's like taking all those pieces and coming together for that person and best serving them. Totally makes sense. Yeah, is it an off-roading community? Is it a racing community? Is it like a classic car restoration? So we're building these and taking them to car shows. What is that community building and building it around that? Uh, I think makes a ton. Yeah, because then they would be so excited. Like I just entered this car show. Check it out, and they'd want to like show pictures of like the subs that they put in the car, or I don't know, yeah. like whatever <laughs> that they put in. Um, so it, like there's like definitely people that like would love to share that experience, and so that's really depend on the brand, obviously, and then how you can build that out. Totally makes sense. I can see this apply like on on the food side of things. If you're selling, you know healthy prepackaged breakfast, you know, bars or something or, or packaged oatmeal or whatever, that would be a health play. If you're selling, you know, barbecue supplies and, and barbecue tools and utensils, that's a relationship play, right? Barbecue is about the memory family and mm-hmm. gatherings mm-hmm. and friends and, and, and memories. And so, yeah, I like that thinking about what, what does this tie into? And then, and then building your, your challenge around that super, super smart. Um, cool. How, and I know you also, you mentioned this in the beginning, but the challenge really accelerated every other aspect of your business. It was a 3x multiplier of revenue, which is impressive considering how well you guys were doing on Amazon at the time. But how does a challenge help scale the rest of your brand? Yeah, great question. So this is the part that was totally unexpected and totally welcomed because I was uh, I did all of our marketing. I ran our ads, emailed, um, you know, wrote our content, everything like that. And so... Um, when we had our community, all of a sudden, like these incredible stories with pictures of our water bottles and stuff were just flooding this Facebook group. And I'm like, man, these are way cooler stories than I could have come up with, yeah. you know? I'm like, they're like, they're real, they're authentic. And so um, I would scrape that content and turn them into blog posts, which then I would use that blog post to send up an email, which would drive revenue. And then if that, e- that email performed very well, you know, I'd turn that, that content into a Facebook ad. And then that Facebook ad, you know, a drive revenue. And so I was like this free content that was just like free, flooded. Free content and, machine, man. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, by the time we sold, we didn't even tap into like a fifth of it. I feel like it was just like so much. And we could just keep going through different stories that would relate to different people, different segments of our community. And um, and we just run them as ads. And uh, so that was like the biggest thing that helped us scale was just like, before I would like beg people like can you please just take a picture with our water bottle can you send us something and we had no idea how to do influencer marketing um or brand ambassadors we didn't have any of that and so like to get that kind of content was really hard for us and so I was the face of our ads for a long time and I like but then as soon as we had this community they became everything and so I didn't have to come up with all this content anymore my life just got so much easier and I could create my my monthly plan. I'm like, here's a cool story. Here's a great story. And just like throw it all in there. And these emails and blog posts and ads like performed so much better than even the stuff I could come up with because it was so authentic. And so like um, people would share their stories of how their lives were changed by coming in to, and being a customer of ours. Um, and like that's like you can't make it up. And it wasn't like forced. It wasn't paid for. It was real, you know. 
Yeah, it's so, it's so great. And and I think it, it, it makes a lot of sense in the beginning, especially to kind of be the face of your brand if you're so inclined and you've got the personality and the ability to do that. But, but that's also hard and it's exhausting. And then if you ever want to sell your business, that becomes tricky too. So you allowed, you kind of leveraged this challenge to allow the customers to be the face of the brand and and to really have this yeah, content exactly. machine that, that you leveraged for, for scale. And so uh, kudos to you for that. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of the mechanics here. So how, how did this work? So you got this 60 day hydration challenge, you got these mini challenges along the way. How did you promote it? How did you facilitate it? And I know that this, that could be a podcast in and of itself, but kind of high level, how did you promote it? How did you structure it? How'd you facilitate it? For sure. So the, the structure essentially is 60 day hydration challenge or 60 day core objective, the thing that you have your customer pledge to do for that time period, however long that might be, 30, 60 days. And then every single week, I would break it up into many weekly challenges. And there were so many reasons for this. Uh, one, because six days is a long time and people time. lose interest. You know, so they were like, oh, I don't know. But then if you're changing up the conversation every single week, that's what caused the like hyper engagedness of our community was like, it's nutrition week, it's self-love week, it's setting goals. And so the conversations were always changing and people were always interested in what's going on. So they would stay around. Um, and, and engage longer, you know, and then uh, the other part of that is that it, it helps them with all those other things that we talked about to be successful along the customer journey. And then my it's first so cool challenge, too, you because know, like if you if all you had to talk about was water, maybe you kind of run out of things to say, like, I'm still hydrated. <laughs> I feel great. I mean, yeah. there'd, be, there'd be more to it than that. But the idea that you had then specific mini challenges each week, change the conversation, allow maybe the same person to comment every week and to share something new and fresh every week. There's going to be mm-hmm. some people along that journey that water's cool, and so the hydration is a nice benefit. But it was really one of those many challenges that exactly that lit a fire under them and caused them to really make big personal gains in, in their life. And so, love the idea of the weekly mini challenge. That's exactly exactly what happened. You know, some people were like, oh, "I'm working on my water, but I'm really doing my like self love." You know, and yeah, yeah, um, they're they're doing that. And so, and then the other like really big pro to that is that it like people from our first round they still do it. Like 16 challenges later, they're still in it because every single round is different because you change the mini weekly challenges, and so it's like it's not this it's a set it and forget it kind of machine. You know, like once you build it, you just keep it running and all you do is change out the mini weekly challenges and it's a whole new experience every single time uh without having to like reinvent the wheel which is really really good because then people stay around and when they stay around they start promoting you uh to the new customers and they're like do you have the purple bottle do you have the great green one like and they start selling your products and that's better than anything you could say that's awesome and so are you mostly then kind of facilitating this through through facebook and through a community there, or are you doing something, you know, through Discord or Slack or email or, or kind of how you're facilitating it? Yeah, it was all through Facebook. So we had our Facebook um, group, mainly for a few reasons. Facebook groups are just like, I, I feel like the best community place right now. It has all the tools you need, like being able to go live and set events and see who's engaging. Um, and then also just because that was the majority of our ad spend, you know, we were like all on Facebook. And so it was easy. That was our customers. They were there. Um, so that's what I always recommend in all the communities I've helped, you know, they're on Facebook as well. And it gives you all the tools that you need to run the community, which is great. Very cool. Uh, so how much, and you, you guys, you and your fiance exited the, the business. Congratulations to you guys. You know, I know that Thank you. for most brand owners, either that's the goal or they want to, they want to merge with somebody else. And, you know, but usually some M&A is, is part of the goal for, for e-com brands. So talk about that just a little bit. How how do you think this this success with challenges allowed you to have that exit that you had hoped for? Yeah, I mean, it gave us so many pieces of the puzzle that, you know, when we were talking to our broker for years, they're like, you need this thing, this thing. I'm like, oh. You know, and then when he had this community, we're like, oh, we have those things now. Like, here's a here's a roadmap, <laughs> you know, like here's like. Here's a five to 10 year roadmap of what the customers want, because now we actually know them. You know, like we talk to them, they say, we run surveys and they want these products. Here's a game plan. We could give them that as well as it just like, it definitely provides a level of defense, you know, when you have an audience, you know, like that is like, it's so valuable in so many ways. Um, I mean, that's why Facebook. So like such a big you know, companies, they've got a huge audience. And if you can have like an audience of 
of your own that rallies behind you that's your biggest fan um and grow your email list and stuff it, it's it's very attractive you know to a potential buyer of like hey look here is you know some defense because you got like this like hyper engaged community and a big email list and it's continuing to grow and here's a vehicle to attract new customers um but definitely most of all just like that roadmap um because like Chad and I, we we launched products back in the day that completely flopped because we didn't know our customers. And that's very expensive. That's like so hard. <laughs> um, so much time, now, so like, much money and in, in you're getting your first run and, and working with manufacturers and prototypes and all that just to then wah, wah, have, it, have it fail. Yeah, it's painful. It's very painful. And like every product that we launched after our community was a success because like it was based off of what they wanted. And, and we were able to be like, show them us building it and it's about to launch and they were ready to buy um and so that just like it really helps you know that roadmap we didn't have one before like if somebody said where do you take this brand before it was like um like, you know, wherever you, you want to whatever yeah. sounds good to you <laughs> yeah, yeah but now exactly. when you when you know your customer and you have this community you know what products to offer next because they will tell you and and what do what does a buyer of your brand want what is a potential investor whether it's a strategic or pe or, or whoever's going to come in and buy the brand. They want they want to know, how can I grow this brand more, right? I'm buying it at this value, but I want to grow it to two, three, four, five X what you're currently doing. So what's my product roadmap? How defensible is this, right? How likely am I to be able to ward off competitors and then grow, you know, as comp- competition increases? And having a community is about the best protection, the best moat that you can have around your brand. You know, certainly uh, uh, intellectual property, you know, IP and patents and stuff, that's cool. But that's kind of hard to, to get, you know, in a, in a lot of cases. And so having this this community around your brand really uh, provides that. And then, you know, it increases LTV. It can help either lower CAC or just keep CAC at a healthy level. And so I love it. I think this, right. is, this is likely, you know, one missing piece that... Uh, people need in their in their marketing and in their approach to building new customers or attracting new customers and keeping existing ones is is launching challenges and so uh, i know you're not part of the brand anymore you guys sold it and stuff are they still doing these challenges like is it still running or, or do you know yeah yeah i believe they still are um they were uh i think they're on the 16th round now that's so cool of the so 60 cool. day aggregation challenge uh uh-huh. and we we exited it at the 10th so I did ten nice. of them before leaving. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. But really, the the ideal thing here is you find a challenge that works, that gets people interested, and and then you just keep you keep doing it, you keep running it. And it becomes it becomes evergreen, and you change out the mini challenges, but then the overarching challenge still works. So and the biggest thing is like you can't mess up. To be honest, like if you start a challenge and it's not like it doesn't hit like the target, if you're showing up authentically. And like yeah, you're showing no. up like you like this is our brand, this is our mission, this is what we're trying to do. That shines through beyond anything else. And then you can make adjustments, you know, like your customers are like, man, you're so cool. I really enjoy- enjoyed this. But how about we try a um, like a step challenge now? Yeah, you know, like that yeah. would make more sense. So it's like it's going out there and just I mean, my first challenge I just was winging. I had no idea. I didn't even know I was doing weekly challenges. I was just like, hey, guys, like let's drink water. <laughs> And it just evolved into something and people like helped me to build it because like they could see the authenticity and they, they bought into the brand mission. So that's why I emphasize brand mission more than anything, because you just really can't mess it up if you're like are genuine and you have a strong mission. And that's really what you're trying to do is help transform people's lives. Well said. I love that. That's going to be a good place to kind of wrap up this discussion. I do want you to share, though, if people are listening, they're like, OK, this sounds awesome. But you know what? I don't want to do this by myself. So, uh, Alicia, what is what is the name of your company? I think it's Challenge Makers, correct? So, tell us a little bit about that and and how do you guys operate? Yeah, for sure. So, challengemakers.com uh, is where I have like a little course now where you can kind of go through in the exact process of uh, my templates, the avatar worksheet, identifying your own customer journey, um, and then all my emails and um, all the templates into building a challenge. Um, I have that available uh, as well as the option to work one-on-ones with me uh, where my team comes in and we strategize it for you and actually build it for you. Um, so we have, you know, both options available on Challenge Maker. At challengemakers.com. Alicia Reynoso, ladies and gentlemen. Alicia, that was 
so good. So fun. Thank you for the time. Uh, really, really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for having me. That was a blast. Awesome. And as always, thank you for tuning in. We would love to hear from you. Hey, connect with me on the socials. If we're not friends on LinkedIn, what's going on? If we're not connected on Facebook or on Twitter, let's do that. I am beginning to post more regularly. And check out the YouTube channel, OMG Commerce uh, YouTube channel, posting new content there, new shorts, new stuff. Maybe you missed a previous episode. We got highlights for you on YouTube, so check that out. Uh, And as always, until next time, thank you for listening. (laughs) 